Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs, and today I have this fun gate fold and belly band card to share with you. So let's jump right in. So we're going to start by cutting down our cardstock, and the base of the card needs to be eight and a half by five and a half inches. And then the belly band is going to be nine and three eighths by one and a half inches. So I will have all those measurements on my blog if you need to see them in writing, because that's probably a little easier. Um, so just jump over to my blog. It's always linked and listed in my description. Um, and then we're going to score them as well. And I'll give you those measurements as soon as we score. So I am using the rotary trimmer here just because it was easier. And I knew I was going to bring in some 12 by 12 cardstock. Uh, so for the panels, you'll need two. It's going to be five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. And I chose to use this stunning Prima Aquarel Dreams uh, pattern paper. I'm actually using several things from the collection in this card just because I have them and they're so, so pretty. Uh, so you do need two of those panels, as I said, that they were five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. And then for the belt, your pattern paper needs to be nine and three eighths by one and one quarter. Um, you could alter that measurement a little bit if you wanted um, a bigger area showing um, when you adhere it to the craft cardstock uh, but I chose to just have that kind of thin thinner looking area you'll see here when we actually start making it what I mean by these measurements and honestly if I could do this again I would almost make the belt a little bit smaller I mean belly band belt you know what I mean the part that's going to go across the center and keep the card closed um, I would have made the craft piece a bit smaller thinking about it now after I've made this uh, but I didn't know that at the time so you'll see what I mean here when we get into making it so here I'm going to score my card base. That was the eight and a half by five and a half piece. We're going to score at two and one eighteenths on both sides. So I just, I flipped it instead of doing it the other way because you could measure it out. Um, but I chose to do it this way. So I just flip the cardstock on the scoreboard. And then I also had scored the uh, belly band at the two and three eighths mark. And once again, I just flipped it so that I could... Um, see what I was kind of folding there uh, and it it's a little you're gonna see right here it's a little thicker than it needs to there's more space than it needs I don't know if that's gonna make sense you guys uh so if you had a super bulky card like if we were gonna add foam or you know something to add more dimension to this card then that belly band would be perfect but because I don't it's just a little bit more gaping than I want it to be hopefully that makes sense so next time I make this card I'll have to ponder my measurements a little bit better but the, you guys know that pattern paper is not something I work with often so I was just kind of trying to come up with a really fun and creative way to use pattern paper because I started collecting some because I love that so so pretty um but you know my measurements were just a touch off where I wanted them to be and that's okay I mean it's first time we gotta we gotta try something so here I just I brought in I don't know I call it the Tim Holtz distressing tool I don't know what its actual name is I should go look that up but uh, it just distresses the edges of cardstock you can do this with scissors as well if you don't have this tool I happen to have it so I wanted to use it but you don't need it. It's just an extra thing that's kind of fun to just bring in some distressed edges. And I just thought that would be really pretty on this card uh, to add a bit of texture and interest because there's not going to be added dimension. Um, and then I brought in, this is where the Aquarial Dreams collection kind of comes into play. I have the rub-ons here. I'm also going to bring in the ephemera in a little bit. Uh, and then that just everything goes together so easily. So you don't have to kind of try to find things that easily go together. They just, everything works because it was designed to. And I did also run a piece of 80 pound hammer, or, uh, 80 pound Nina solar white uh, crest. I forget what it's, you guys know what I'm talking about. The Nina 80 pound solar weight classic crest, I think that one's called. I don't use it as often because I use my hammer mill more because that's less expensive. Um, but I wanted something a little bit lighter weight to go inside of the card base because I am going to add just a piece of white cardstock to write on. Don't need to do this. You can absolutely write on craft, but I chose to do this because I thought it would just add something a little bit interesting and special on the inside of the card. So I also 
took off some of those rubbins that were the little dragonflies and added them as well. I just thought that this would be kind of a fun way to add a little more interest on the inside of the card because I'm not doing like 500 techniques like I usually do with my cards. So I was kind of trying to find fun ways to just add different stuff and interest. I did try kind of ponder after I'd hear everything you'll see here in a second. After I, uh, I adhered everything, I kind of wondered if I should have done a back panel um, because it's just kind of plain. I don't know. I may go and add one yet. I didn't in this video and I didn't while I was making the card, um, but I may. You'll see here in the end when I show you the card up close that it just looks a bit bare. I mean, it's the back of the card, so it's not. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'll have to ponder that a little bit, but. I did adhere my panel into the inside of my card base and you guys saw me run it through my switch with a stitched uh, rectangle die just again to add a little interest um, and then I adhered it in and had to lift it off really quickly just because it wasn't centered and I was worried it was going to adhere uh, and then I brought in the pieces here to kind of make sure that I had them the way I wanted them with the the image because they are two images that kind of go together although there is a space in between them it just kind of adds to the cohesiveness of the card and I like how that looks uh, and then I adhered those down and tried to center them the best that I can one of them is a little off kilter to the other not a big deal I don't think anybody would even really notice honestly because the pattern on them is so stunning that I don't even know if you'd really see that one's a little bit like a touch higher than the other one and then this is the part where I'm going to show you where I have just the slightest piece of um, crafts cardstock poking out on the like sides of the uh, pattern paper so here I don't know if you can really see it the top and the bottom have a little bit of of extra but then the the part uh, at the edges doesn't really so I didn't measure that quite properly but again <laughs> I don't think it matters but totally up to you I mean if you want it to be more more perfect than mine then by all means do your measurements a little bit uh, better than I did <laughs> But I mean, the measurements are the numbers I gave you is just that um, it didn't I didn't allow for that same amount of space between um, the, the edges. Uh, but it's I mean, you're going to hear it. So it's not really going to matter. Like here, you can't even tell that there isn't the exact same amount. So totally up to you how you want to do that. But I, I chose to go ahead with it and just you would hear stuff on top of it because this is where I'm going to kind of play with some of the ephemera to create what I want for a look with the belly band. So totally up to you what you want to do here. But this is kind of what I've been doing. I, I um, I've been kind of buying pattern papers that have, you know, ephemera sets and like cutout pieces or pockets or fun things so that I can create more than just although this is a card but more than just cards with them as I do find that I struggle a little bit to come up with fun ideas in the card realm when I have pattern papers and stuff because I feel like I should you know be ink blending or embossing or whatever and not that you can't do that with pattern paper you absolutely can it's just that I don't have a lot of experience with pattern paper so I struggle a little bit to come up with what I feel like are ideas you guys would be interested in. And I do really try to vary what I show on this channel simply because I don't want to show you guys the same technique over and over and over uh, or the same card design because I want you to, to come and be like, oh, wow, I could try that. Or I've never tried that. That sounds interesting or, you know, whatever. So I really want my channel to have, you know, variation when it comes to paper crafting so that when you come back, you can learn something new. Like it's not just the same technique over and over, which there's nothing wrong with that. There are channels that do that and they create stunning pieces of art every time they do it. And it's phenomenal. It's just that with my channel, I uh, I just wanted to be able to offer you guys a little more varied card making so that if you, um, you weren't into ink blending, maybe you did try this one instead. Or, you know, if you weren't into um, embossing, maybe you would try, you know, the ink blending or, you know what I mean, hopefully. So that's kind of what I, uh, I want to show on my channel. I want there to be a lot of varied techniques. That's why I, I wanted to do the junk journal series and um, why I do cards and then try to do them in different sizes and shapes so that you guys can just kind of see different techniques being used and different ways to use them. But pattern paper is somewhere I've been very sadly lacking. So I really was trying to make up with the, this video and uh, some of the ones with my junk journal, trying to bring in different things so that I can kind of um, work on my own skills because that is somewhere that I struggle a bit. 
So hopefully that all made sense. Hope you guys don't mind my little my little uh, ramble there. Uh, but you saw me just kind of playing with some of the ephemera pieces, kind of laying them out until I was happy. There's no real rhyme or reason to this. Honestly, uh, I just usually pick a focal image, which was the envelope, and then add a couple of smaller envelope or smaller uh, ephemera pieces to kind of build a little bit of a cluster around it. And then I brought in these opal self-adhesive gems by Spellbinders just because I thought that they would look really pretty and be subtle. So they're not stealing the show, but they're still giving some beautiful shimmer and shine in the center of the flowers because that's where I chose to add them. And they also come with, I think, four different sizes on the sheet, which I love because you guys know that I love variation and texture and dimension. So to have different sizes that I can use is just really, really important to me because uh, I like to do that. So I tend to stick a stay away from things that don't offer several sizes when they uh, are something I'm looking for. So these are the first self-adhesive ones I've ever used. Um, I've used them a few times on my channel, but this is the only, only sheet I own and it lasts forever because you only use a couple. I think I used... Um, I think in the end I may have done seven in there just because you guys know I like uneven numbers and then because I can never figure out when I should stop I did bring in my clear glitter pen and just put a little bit of extra glitter on the leaves around that little cluster that was honestly just to move your eye around a little bit when the light caught it and I thought it looked really pretty so now I'm going to hold it up and show it to you all close I'm going to turn it around you're going to see the back and I just wonder if I really should have done something more with the back I don't know you guys tell me what you think do you think that I should have added a pattern paper to the background or to the back of the card or does it really matter because I mean you don't you don't see the back of the card right like if someone was going to display this or whatever you wouldn't see the back of the card so I don't know if it really matters but you guys tell me what you think because I just right there it's like it looks a little bland I don't know uh, I, I struggle with pattern paper so you guys have to tell me what you think but that is the card I have for you guys today I hope you enjoyed it please leave me a comment and tell me what you think of how this card turned out uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already I do new videos every Monday and Thursday thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon bye bye for now